marching band looks ahead after gains this season. Students show their talents to the community. Kids raise money to improve their school. And the football team fights forward as it battles injuries. Hi, I'm Brock Anderson. Will is out sick today. And I'm Kaylee Ephraimson, and you're watching Eagle Zone. We'll get to those stories in a bit, but first, it's Teen Driver Safety Week. And first responders in the community are partnering with a student group to make sure kids know the importance of safety behind the wheel. Freshmen through seniors at Central High School have images in their minds of how serious a car crash can be. That's thanks to this mock crash organized by the group Students Against Destructive Decisions, local law enforcement, and other responders. Organizers want teens to know decisions they make while driving have consequences. According to the Department of Transportation, motor vehicle crashes are a leading cause of death for teens 15 to 18 years old in the United States. The department also adds that teens in inexperience behind the wheel makes them more prone to crashes. People 15 to 20 years old accounted for 8% of the drivers involved in fatal traffic crashes in 2022. Even though they only made up 5% of licensed drivers that year, students at the high school had the option of staying inside if the mock crash was too disturbing to see. Fall activities are coming to a close, and that covers more than sports. In the music department, the marching band has been competing this fall, and it's been practicing since before the school year started. You might have seen the marching band performing in competitions or on the football field. But the group is a little different this year than it has been the last couple years. We achieved more success than maybe what we were expecting coming in. Uh, kids really dug in and worked hard. And that hard work paid off, with the band winning the Spirit of the Festival Award at the Festival of Bands in Sioux Falls. It also earned a first place finish in both parade and field competition at a Yankton event. And it's a younger, a bigger, younger class coming in this year. So, yeah, a younger group, more inexperienced there. You got to got to get the experience and the work ethic built into them. Director Jeremy Shutter says the developing younger students are working on establishing the fundamentals that will transfer over to future seasons. What we grew this year gives us a base to grow upon next year. The uh, younger kids are really kicking butt with it and doing a good job. Even though the March band season is over, you can still watch them online if you didn't get a chance to see them perform. Go to Central's YouTube channel and select any of the varsity football games. Scroll to the halftime show and you'll see the band. The Aberdeen Parks and Rec is holding its annual Haunted Forest event this week. It takes place Friday, October 25th and Saturday, October 26th at Wiley Park from 6.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. There will be a mat matinee on Saturday, the 26th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Tickets ordered in advance cost $15, while tickets at the door are $20. For more information, it can be found on the Haunted Forest page of Aberdeen's website. Back at Central, we're at the start of a new term, which means we're just coming out of a week with final tests and projects. As first term classes end, Mr. Cobb's digital photography class was a final art show for students and teachers throughout Central High School. Visitors voted on their favorite pictures as student artists explained their work. This is just one example of a final project for class. Art students at Central are putting on a display of their own. As Eagle Zone's Will Allen explains, this showcase reaches out to more than Central students and teachers. This art gallery at the Aberdeen Parks and Rec building has work produced by high school students from Aberdeen Central. I love having art shows out in the community because it shows everybody what our students are capable of and it also gives students the ability to see what it's like to be professional artists. It teaches you how to handle paperwork with art shows and like how to work with museums and collaborate to get your stuff out there. If you walk through the gallery, you'll see the result of students who worked hours on their art, spanning weeks. The students are in a portfolio art class, so there are a variety of pieces spanning genres. Well, there's a lot of like drawings and paintings, but there's also like animation and sculptures. Every subject matter, some abstract, some realism. Our students are really wide ranged in their art abilities. The show started October 7th and continues through this month at the Aberdeen Recreation and Cultural Center.
And I think it's important people should see what you know your classmates, your students, and people in Aberdeen are capable of, even at young ages. There's some really talented individuals in this show and in the school as well. That was Eagle Zone's Will Allen reporting. Again, you have a week left to see the students' work displayed in the gallery. It will be at the ARC through the end of the month. Now from the high school to an elementary school in town, you might have had kids asking you to buy candy or some other item for a fundraiser. But what does the money go towards? Eagle Zone's Malachi Bratton returned to his elementary school to find out. He joins us with that story. Malachi? At Simmons Elementary, students are raising money for new playground equipment. It should provide them with fun, or it could pay off even more. This playground will have new musical equipment if kids raise enough money to buy it. We're hoping to get a xylophone like they have out at Wiley Park, and we would like to get some drums. As for how the fundraiser is going, Mrs. Armin has said there haven't been any complaints yet. But of course, there's still the money. That's why the kids at the school have been selling chocolate this fall. The fundraiser is um, 600 boxes of chocolates, just like this one. All of our students had to check them out, get permission from their parents, and then they sell it, they bring the money back, and we get a percentage of the profits and they get prizes. So the new equipment is the reason they're selling the chocolate, but why the new equipment? According to the principal, Kim Allman, it's both fun and a learning experience. I think it, it meets both of those needs. It teaches kids more about the music that they're learning in music class, makes connections for them, and then it is just for fun and another thing for them to, to use when they're out at recess. And according to the Portobello Institute, music and movement help with cognitive, physical, and emotional development in education for students. Although, once being a kid myself, the kids will more than likely want to focus on the fun, not the cognitive experience when using the new equipment. Thanks, Malachi. I'm sure you're right. The kids are thinking about the fun in nice accent, by the way. We'll be right back with sports after this message created by media production students. Through the wasteland, through the highways, and on and on we'll go. Come on, man, that was my jam. Yellow. Bro, where are you? Class, it starts in five minutes. I'll be fine. Okay, well, Schaffhauser's gonna kill. <laughs> Again? Bro, class just started. Where are you? Kobe. Hey man, you got Mario on that thing? Mm -mm, not for you. Give me one game on that. Oh, man, whatever. See, I told you guys I'd make it. What are you guys looking at? He's right behind me, isn't he? Welcome back. I'm Preston Brake with this week's Eagles on Sports. We have highlights from two home games over the past week. First, volleyball. Hosts the Harrisburg team. The Eagles are off to a slow start, but pick up the pace when freshman Camden Borg spikes the ball for an Aberdeen point. That closes the gap for the Eagles. Later in that set, junior Kennedy Weathers hits the ball over the net, making the score 18-23. But in the end, it's not enough. The Eagles lose this match in three sets. Next, the football team also has a tough opponent as it hosts the Sioux Falls Lincoln Patriots. Late in the second quarter, Aberdeen is down by a bundle, but the Eagles have Lincoln pinned back against their own goal line. That causes the safety to get points on the board for Aberdeen. Now to start the third quarter, the Golden Eagles kick off and force a fumble. Aberdeen recovers the ball, but two falls is too tough on this night and leave the Hub City with a big win. The football team is preparing for playoffs as their regular season comes to a close. It's been a season of ups and downs for the Eagles football team, with wins and losses coming in spurts. Uh, I think we should uh, continue to improve. Uh, we kind of had a little rough start of the season, a couple of losses that we probably shouldn't have had. The Eagles played Pierre in the first game of the season. Pierre had won state the year prior, 
but the Eagles held strong with them and only lost by a touchdown. Two weeks later, the Eagles lost to Brookings by a point. But since those losses, the younger players who hadn't played varsity years prior are getting more comfortable, which had led to more Eagle wins. Yeah, I think we've had a handful of uh, you know sophomores and some juniors that didn't play a lot last year. Sophomores have, have stepped up this year and, and filled spots that we need. Yeah, um, Carter lost a big one on offense, and then um, on defense, I mean, uh, Holinka really gets those guys in on the line. So, but injuries have been a problem this year. Starting quarterback Brenner Waldrop left the field with a serious injury the third game of the season. Backup QB Braden Bowman left the sixth game of the season injured. By this home here on game, leading receiver Colby Down was lining up behind the center taking snaps as QB. But with the playoffs coming up, the Eagles would love to see people come out and support the team. Uh, I would expect they would see an exciting game with some hard hitting, uh, some big plays on offense and big plays on defense, and probably a block kick or two. The team's last regular season game is Thursday, October 24th at 7 p.m. in Watertown. We'll follow the team into the playoffs and let you know how they do on future shows. Brock? Thanks, Preston. We talked about a new term underway earlier in the show. One change that brought for us here at Eagle Zone is an addition of a student to our class with the skill to pull off our next segment. Here's JL Aviles Feliciano with this week's recap in Spanish. JL? Hola, soy JL Aviles para darte un resumen de las noticias en español. La banda de marcha de Aberdeen Central High School terminó su temporada y su director está muy feliz con los resultados. La banda de marcha es muy juvenil, pero aún pudieron ganar algunos premios. Las lesiones que los estudiantes de la banda de música aprendieron este año les ayudará a mejorar en el futuro. Estudiantes de la clase de arte en el high school están enseñando sus dibujos a la comunidad de Aberdeen. Una clase de arte tiene una galería en el departamento de Parks and Recreation. Hay muchos proyectos diferentes de arte y van a estar en exhibición durante el mes de octubre. Los estudiantes en las escuelas primarias están haciendo una recaudación de fondos. En la primaria, sí nos están teniendo una recaudación de fondos para comprar nuevos patios de recreo. Los niños están vendiendo barras de chocolate para recaudar fondos. Ellos también están comprando equipos que son para música. Las investigaciones muestran que la música y el movimiento ayudan a niños a tener más éxito en la escuela. En el deporte, el equipo de fútbol ya casi termina su temporada. Han tenido buenos juegos, pero ha sido un año difícil para ellos por las lesiones. En un, uno de sus partidos, todos los lanzadores estaban lesionados. La siguiente opción fue poner un wide receiver en la posición de un lanzador. Gracias y, me puedes, y si me puedes entender, dale las gracias a tu maestro de español. Thanks, JL. That's all for this episode of Eagle Zone. You can always watch our stories whenever you want by scrolling down to the Eagle Zone section of the school district website. That's aberdeen.k12.se.us. We'll leave you this week with another look at the mock crash to remind us all about vehicle safety, whether you're the driver or the passenger. With Eagle Zone, I'm Kaylee Ephraimson. And I'm Brock Anderson. See, See you, you next time. time.